What is up, you beautiful humans? Welcome back. And we are just going to get into this one really quickly. This is for the filmmakers out there and for the podcasters and putting together what we call an aggregate connection. So for those of you filming interviews and you've got multiple people using USB microphones like the one I'm talking to you on, it just happens to be in my handheld recorder, but you only have one laptop, you don't have a handheld recorder or any other way to get that audio but your laptop. Also for podcasters, if you have multiple co-hosts or a guest, like so if it's you and someone else in the same space, can you actually connect two microphones and get two separate tracks? Yes, you can. Now I'm gonna walk you through the Mac OS setup. It is built right in. Windows can have that with a plugin and I will link that up and you will just kind of work through that to create what's called an aggregate connection. But for the Mac OS users, we're gonna roll right into this one. So let's do it. So first things first, we have the microphones plugged in and we need to, as I've already searched, audio MIDI setup. We're gonna open that up and you will see aggregate device already highlighted here. Now underneath of it, I have the microphones already connected. So what we have is the ATR microphone one, microphone two, and then for, on my computer, it also shows up as USB advanced audio device one and two. So yours may be a little bit different, but you at least will have ATR USB mic one and two. If you have the ATR, that is. Now ATR, we're gonna connect that, ATR. And then I'm also going to connect the USB advanced audio device. We're also gonna make sure that drift correction is selected on these. It, I won't get into the technical specs of it, it just kind of keeps things synced up. So that is done, and we will make sure that in system preferences here, that our audio is aggregate device, and it is aggregate device. My voice is actually going up and down. And for the output, we're just gonna use the internal speakers for now, but what I will recommend is always using headphones when you're monitoring audio in your editor or what you're recording in. All right, now we're gonna go into GarageBand, Empty Project, choose. Now it's gonna bring up, we are gonna do audio, our voices, and so I'll go ahead and do input one plus two. Now on aggregate device, you'll see here, just wanna make sure that yes, the input device is aggregate device and that the output is our built-in output. So that's either gonna be our speakers or the headphones that we may plug into our computer. We are going to create. And we have track audio one. It looks like it's actually this microphone. So the other microphone that I have here is the one that is in track one. Now we are going to add a track. And we are going to go to input three plus four. And create. And of course, that's the one that I'm actually talking to you on right now. I can kind of bring that level down a little bit. Uh, probably just how close I am to the microphone. Now, something else that you need to do here in GarageBand, we are going to right click, configure track header, and we want to record enable. So we have record enable, so there's the red dot there, and then we're also going to see there's the red dot here, and we're gonna make sure that those are both enabled, they're blinking and ready for recording. Now I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of talk into the microphone that I'm already on. So we are going to uh, make sure that that's off and click record. So I am actually talking to you and you will see this waveform on the screen here. So that's in GarageBand. And that is my voice here in GarageBand on audio two, on track two. Now, if I move this microphone away from me. Now I am actually talking in the other microphone. And so this is track one, but I'm talking into the other microphone. And one of the things that I will uh, let you, so you, as you see that in uh, track two, you'll see there's a little bit of bleed in that. And what I'll do is I'll link up a video to show you that you can eliminate a lot of that bleed. Let's play that back, click record. So I am actually talking to you and you will see this waveform on the screen here. So that's in, got that on track two. Now I am actually talking in the other microphone. And so this is track one, but I'm talking into the other microphone. And one of the things that I will, 
All right, so I guess that was simple enough, I hope. Two USB microphones going into one computer and two separate tracks. And like I said, you can do this in Windows. I will link up that plugin so that you can actually set up that virtual mixer and do a very similar setup. And as I've recommended before, again, if you're working with multiple people in the room, try to have them spaced out so that it eliminates or cuts down a lot on that background bleed. Because if I'm talking in there in front of me, yes, a lot of that will get eliminated, but not every little bit. So I did do a video where I help people just clean up that audio in your post-production. So when you go in and you might see those like little waveforms, like when you're not saying anything, but your guest or your co-host is saying something, you will notice that those waveforms are there and you can hear it very faint uh, in the background. There's a way to clean that up. But as long as the audio is synced up, really it should be okay. So even if you have still just a little bit of bleed, as long as everything is synced up, you should be okay. What conversations can we have below? Hit me up in the comments section. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more of those creative endeavors, the business side, the filmmaking, the audio podcast, all of the stuff in between. And I really appreciate your time and attention on this one. Thanks so much, and I'll catch you on the next one.